Good afternoon, Excellencies. It's a great honor for me to be here this afternoon. My name is Luther Castillo Harry. My mother language is Garifuna. This is my language. I was forced to learn Spanish to go to school. I remember when the children in my village used to speak in their own native language, they was punished by the professors. Then I was born in a small village called Tocamacho in La Mosquitia in Honduras. It's a small village without electricity, without running water, without many basic needs but full of joy, of solidarity. People who are happy, discriminated by the system. Then, when my mom was in labor, she was attended by the midwife in the village. A midwife in my village is a woman with the less opportunity in the family, who grandma teach her to deliver a baby to survive. This midwife it was punished by the doctors who used to visit the village that they, they were guilty of the high level of infant mortality in the town. Then as you see, I came a little bit far of what they define as a science in those areas. Then I used to walk three hours to go to school. An hour from my village to Camacho to another village called Coyoles. And from Coyoles take a canoe another hour to cross the Rio Tinto Negro. And from that, after crossing the river, walk another hour to go to school. There, my grandma used to wake me up every day at 3 a.m. in the morning because she used to say that she wanted me to be better than her. And that was her hope because she used to think that going to school, the same school who punished us for speaking our own language, it was being better than here. Then I used to walk all those hours to go to school. Then I, in 1999, I gained a scholarship to go to medical school in Cuba. I graduated in 2005 and get my specialty in 2008. I went to Harvard University to get two degrees. I was very happy when I finished, I returned back to tell my grandma that I accomplished the dream, what she used to encourage me to do. Five days after I graduated, she passed away. Then all those knowledge that she taught me bring me to the conclusion that I agree that we need to rethink the model of science and have eyes to see the diversity of knowledge who coexist in our territory with different point of view that the traditional way how we see science and understand that do science and make science. And being a scientist is not only the job inside the laboratories. It's not only what we see through the length of the microscopy. Sometimes it's difficult to see from our perspective, from the traditional perspective how we have been training and the modern concept of science. I think it's time that we can confront the historic responsibility 
to criticize the traditional way to do science and understand that we have, peoples have, the way to see the science. Today, I have been learning many concepts from our friends who has been sharing the knowledge with us. I'm very happy to hear about basic science for good, about equitable collaboration, understand the concept and culture, science for peace and science diplomacy, empowering young people in science, that science is not only about policy, but it's about scientists and policy makers. Go to the policy makers and the listen mode. I think all those concepts has been make my journey from Honduras to be here this afternoon very and very important. We have the challenge to recognize that the science is transdisciplinary, is interdisciplinary, and has the voice of the people. My people in my village, they are accustomed to see many people coming from outside to do research about them, taking them as a subject of the science. Today, I am the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation of the Republic of Honduras. Very proud, very proud to dignify the knowledge of my ancestors. Because this is science too. What they thought, what they teach us, how to live in harmony with the environment. My cousin went to the school and become a very good engineer in forests. And he wanted to build a small house for grandma to cook because people in my village have a house to sleep and another small one to cook their food. Then grandpa told him, this is not a good week to cut the wood to build this small kitchen. He said, grandpa, I'm the expert of the forest. I went to the university. And my grandpa tell him, okay, go and do it. In three months, all the wood was in bad shape. Then he recognized that my grandpa is a scientist. Because even the Garifuna have the only bread in the world. We call it cassava bread who can last without any preservant for two and three years. And that give us even the confirmation that those people who has been named ignorant, they live in harmony with the nature and they are one of the more highest scientists in the world. Thank you very much for being listening. Thank you.